Thank you so much for joining us, students and counselors. We're going to wait just a few seconds as everyone comes into the room. Students, families, counselors, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever it is in the world you are joining us. Thank you so much for joining StriveScan and Cache's virtual college exploration program. These are uh, STEM-focused days in partnership with Cache, which is the College Admissions Collaborative, highlighting engineering and technology. A few housekeeping items before we begin with today's information session. First and foremost, you are encouraged to ask questions throughout the session via the Q&A button that you see on your screen. When you submit a question, it gets sent to our panelists, and they will work to answer the question during the session and at the conclusion of the session as well. We only have 45 minutes. They may not get to every question, but they will receive a transcript of all the questions submitted as well. As a reminder, your camera and your microphone are turned off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. So if you do have any questions, make sure to type them in through the Q&A button. This is one of 50 information sessions and panel presentations that are STEM focused and we run these through tomorrow evening. So we encourage you to check out additional sessions at strivescan.com slash virtual slash STEM. Additionally, starting on Saturday morning, we are featuring colleges that change lives. These are small private liberal arts colleges, 41 of them. You can see those at strivescan.com slash virtual slash CTC. When you sign up for this virtual event, you receive a barcode. You do not need that barcode for this program. And again, we are recording this session and all of the sessions. And the recording will be made at the exact same place you went to register shortly after the presentation. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to our panelists. Thank you, Zach. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University's uh, virtual presentation. My name is Ken Perry. And uh, it's a great day to be an Eagle, and hopefully you guys are going to understand why we are so passionate about uh, our university when we go from there. I have uh, three other individuals with me. So, Sarah, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. My name is Sarah Bofferding, and I'm the Director of Admissions at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University in Prescott, Arizona, so our West Coast campus. Um, I'm very excited to have have you all here today and listen to us tell you a little bit about Embry-Riddle, our programs, our outcomes, um, just the great things that Embry-Riddle can provide to you in your education. So um, thanks for joining us. Hi everyone, my name is Megan Sproul. I'm the Senior Assistant Director for the Daytona Beach Campus and I will be monitoring the chat today if you do have any questions. And finally, hi, my name is Krista Lee. I'm an assistant director of admissions on the Prescott campus. I'm happy to be here with all of you today and I will be monitoring the chat as well. So as we get started, Sarah's gonna load up the presentation and go from there. And Sarah, I think you can take away first time. All right, so you can see my screen, right? Just double checking. Okay, so this slide right here, we're gonna to talk to you about a variety of different things today about Embry-Riddle. And of course, we wanna to talk to you about our academics, all the great programs that we have to offer um, to fit your interests and to fit your outcomes and your career goals. Um, we'll talk about some basic facts, uh, where an Embry-Riddle education can get you, as well as our campuses. We did mention that we've got um, our campus in Florida, as well as our campus in Arizona, as well as a third entity of Embry-Riddle called Embry-Riddle Worldwide with some online options. And then we will wrap it up very quickly at the end with next steps, how to apply to Embry-Riddle and get yourself there. So let's start with some of these fast facts about Embry-Riddle. Ken, I might do a quick check. Are you seeing this okay? Yes. Okay. All right, so some of the fast facts about Embry-Riddle. Now, I know this is in regards to cache and engineering. So we do specialize in a variety of engineering fields across our campuses. We have been ranked number one in aerospace engineering by US News and World Report. Um, and we've held this ranking for multiple years. Now, when I say multiple, I don't just mean one or two. Um, I mean close to 18. So Embry-Riddle has really seized that number one ranking with the education that we provide and we build a strong core into the curriculum to help our students be successful upon graduation, which we'll touch base on in the outcomes section. 
Besides engineering, at our campus in Arizona, we also specialize in security and intelligence. We do have the first and only College of Security and Intelligence in the nation, and that is housed our, on our campus, but it contains our global security and intelligence program as well as our cybersecurity program, in addition to a master's degree. So for those students looking into career paths with the FBI, the CIA, um, security, intelligence across a variety of fields, this might be a great uh, institution to pursue that degree program. And also at the Daytona Beach campus, you have the, uh, we forward thinking, we're always looking to see what's in the future. Uh, we are the first only have an aerospace physiology program. It's a true pre-med program um, that you do. And we work with NASA and the effects of the body in space travel. As you know, we're uh, putting humans back up in space uh, going to visiting Mars is what we're trying to get to. And so we have, uh, again, the Aerospace Physiology Program is our newest major here at the Daytona Beach campus. It's been around for about three years. So some additional facts we want to make sure that you're aware of at Embry-Riddle. Now we talked about those engineering degree programs. All of our engineering programs have the ABET accreditation. So that's very important, whether you're looking at a school like Embry-Riddle or one of our other institutions um, that has an engineering curriculum, you want to make sure they have this accreditation so that they're building in the guidelines and the standards that you need to know when you move into the industry. Some additional things that we want to point out is um, our return on investment. We'll talk a little bit about outcomes, I promise. Um, but our graduates are yielding among the highest in the nation that have a return on investment. So how much money they're paying towards their tuition and then how much they're getting back upon graduation. In addition to that, we've been ranked um, as one of the top institutions within our states of Arizona and Florida for levels of affordability and quality. So lots of great things about Embry-Riddle and just some of those key facts we wanted to make sure that if you learned nothing else from our presentation, you at least knew some of those things. So let's talk a little bit about the academics. So what an Embry-Riddle um, education has to provide for you there. Now within this section, we're gonna spend the next couple of slides talking about some of the great projects that our students are working on, as well as some of the great opportunities they have. And we'll start with our flight team. So in addition to great engineering programs, Embry-Riddle is also known as being the best in the best in aviation with flight specifically. So we do have intercollegiate flying teams on both of our campuses. We actually compete against each other in some friendly competition, but our flight team has won the national championships 13 times, um, as well as they've been inducted into the San Diego Air and Space Museum Hall of Fame. So a great opportunity if you're looking to come to Embry-Riddle and be a pilot, which is the Air Medical Science degree program. Being a member of the flight team is such a great addition to add to your resume. Oops, sorry about that. Besides number one in flight, we're actually number one in business as well. So our Pi Beta Lambda Business Organization is a club on campus at our Arizona campus, and they have competed in the Arizona State Business Competition for the past 13 years, and they have won the first place championship for the past 13 years. Um, this means that we compete against our state schools such as Arizona State University, Northern Arizona and NAU, which are all schools with thousands and thousands of students in their business program. But here comes Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University and we have swept this competition for the past 13 years. And we have Kepler's mission, NASA's Kepler's mission. It is retired and they're kind of working in things that some of you guys may have uh, heard about this mission. So our undergrad students were doing research uh, with some professors here on campus. And again, I understand undergrad. So these projects that we're talking about our undergrad students are doing. So these students were good looking out and looking for binary clusters and they went out and asked NASA. NASA closed this mission. Um, and they, these students asked NASA if they could use um, the pictures, the photographs of this, and they were out there looking for binary star clusters um, and, and awarding uh, research with NASA with that. Again, our undergrad students are doing this. So in addition 
to airplanes and business and star clusters like Ken just mentioned, our students are also working on neutrino detection. So for those of you that don't know, and I would imagine most of you don't know, neutrinos are basically little tiny teeny particles um, that are just out there in the atmosphere. There's thousands of neutrinos just going through right around us at this very moment. Um, but we had students participate with one of our faculty members specifically on neutrino detection at the Los Alamos lab. So what they're trying to determine is there are currently three classifications of neutrinos out there in the scientific community, but there's thought to be a fourth type of neutrino, a, um, a dark matter neutrino that they are searching for. So we actually had students spend some time out there. We had one of our faculty members that took a a little bit of a sabbatical to go work at Los Alamos, and he brought some of our undergraduate students along to do that neutrino detection. Besides that, we also like rockets, I'm sure you can imagine, at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, um, but we like blowing them up as well. So we have some students that were working on constructing a hot fire liquid rocket engine. So when they started working on this project, we immediately thought we need to provide these students a safe place to test it. So we built them a little test cell, um, basically a little bunker for them to do their testing. Um, and they're going to be working on building, designing, and testing this rocket to take that experience with them upon graduation and once they move into the career field. With our engineering programs, we also have a mechanical engineering program, and that relates specifically to the side slide you're seeing right now. So we had some of our engineering students enter into NASA's lunar robotics competition, and this was a little bit of an old project, but we still like to tell it because it's got a really great story. So our students entered this competition, and the goal of the competition was to build a robot that NASA could take to the moon, and it would scoop moon dust. So our students built a robot. They named him Lair E, similar to Wally, -E, if anyone remembers that movie. And they took Larry to the competition. Now, at the competition, unfortunately, we didn't get first place. We didn't scoop the most moon dust. But when NASA saw our robot, they on the spot created a brand new award, the Judges Innovative Design Award, and gave it to Larry because it was the one and only robot that they could actually take as is up to the moon and it would serve its purpose. So if you do happen to come visit us at our Arizona campus, you will see Larry hanging out in our robotics lab. So we also have, like, again, undergrad students here at the Daytona Beach campus uh, and the Arizona campus working together, the LIGO project, and there's lasers, uh, reflective lasers that are around the, around the United States, um, and they were working with professors and kind of proving, um, proving that um, Newton's law of gravity as far as, uh, help me out, Sarah, because my mind's going blank as far as what they, they get, <laughs> theory of rel relativity, there you go. Yes, um, theory of uh, relativity, gravitational waves. Right, gravitational waves uh, throughout the United States, they have reflective uh, lights and lasers running around and they, were, they get to say that they help prove the theory of relativity. Coming in for uh, students, again, robotics competitions, different things that we have going on. Um, this, our students took first place in building, uh, designing, second place overall in this um, artificial intelligence competition, ground vehicle competition, where they're building robots, they're building um, vehicles to go through um, the different competitions that we have. Um, again, artificial intelligence built in working with NASA, working with different projects, uh, always leading the way in what we're doing here at Embry-Riddle. All right, and the last slide that we wanna talk about in the academic section here has to do specifically with that College of Security and Intelligence that I mentioned. So we had some of our students within the Global Security Degree Program go out and do some research with some of the local school districts, the K through 12 schools in our area. And what they did is they did full on security assessments to see 
how safe it would be if there were an active shooter on campus. So um, they tested security windows, they tested door locks, they tested reaction times, and our students went out there and they made recommendations back to the school district. And because of that, um, that outreach effort that, that they did, uh, one of our faculty members submitted a proposal to the Department of Justice and actually it won Embry-Riddle a $750,000 grant to continue to do this type of outreach and support um, as well as get that experience for our students within our local area. Um, so all of these things that Ken and I have talked about over these past couple of slides really are meant to show that, yes, you're going to be coming to college at Embry-Riddle, you're going to have your textbooks, you're going to have your lessons and your papers to write, but you're also going to have this huge advantage by getting this hands-on um, experience outside of the classroom. You know, how many people, like Ken said with the LIGO experiment, um, how many people can say they helped prove Einstein's theory of relativity by something they did in college? All right, Ken, did you want to talk about study abroad? Sure, quickly? sure. Sure. So study abroad, we, we truly believe in the global concept here at Embry-Riddle and we push, you know, encourage students to go study abroad because it's a global world we're living in. You're reaching out and you're working with companies all over the world, um, whether it be at Boeing, Lockheed Martin, SpaceX, whatever, there, there are companies all over the world. So with that, you can go study abroad both during the summer and earn up to six credit hours at a discounted rate. Um, you can also go during the semester and earn up to 12 hours. Um, during the summer, they are faculty-led study abroad. Um, with that being said, again, it's if you're enrolled at the Arizona campus and a Daytona Beach uh, study abroad is led, you as a Daytona Beach or uh, Arizona, Prescott, Arizona student can come and go to the Daytona Beach led. Vice versa, same thing if you're a Daytona Beach student and you have a faculty-led um, study abroad through the Prescott, Arizona campus, you can go there because we are one university and we intertwine as far as our curriculum goes. So besides study abroad, another great way to get kind of outside the classroom and get some of that experience is with internships and co-ops. So we don't require these for any of our degree programs, but we highly recommend them because so many of our students tell us, plus industry tells us that if you get out there and you actually get that hands-on experience, it's gonna make you so much marketable, marketable and so much more valuable to a company. So um, we have comprehensive career services on our campuses and they help students look for internships, look for job opportunities. They provide individualized career advisement. Um, I have heard multiple stories of students going to career services and saying, I want a job for Hawaiian Airlines and then getting a job with Hawaiian Airlines because of um, the connections and the guidance that Embry-Riddle is providing. So some additional things that Career Services does have to offer. They will have resume editing, editing um, information sessions. They will have on-campus info sessions. Um, they will pretty much help you prepare yourself to the best that you can to interview and then get one of these internships or co-op opportunities. Um, another great thing that Career Services does, they do host a career expo. So we have very large career expos on both of our campuses. The biggest one usually happens to fall around our homecoming weekend. And we do that specifically because we want all the aviation, aerospace, security, and intelligence industry partners to send their Embry-Riddle alumni reps back to our campus. And when an Embry-Riddle alumni rep more often than not meets another Embry-Riddle alum or a soon to be Embry-Riddle alum, they wanna help them out a little bit. They wanna start building that network and that connection. And we see so many of our students get internships and get job offers right there at Career Expo. So um, this is a great opportunity to kind of supplement what Ken and I talked about, the academics, the strong academics that you're going to get at Embry-Riddle, that hands-on education, these internship and co-op opportunities are just going to better prepare you um, to graduate and walk right into the industry. What I think what sets Embry-Riddle apart is, is that, you know, we have a top flight education, we're known for aerospace engineering, we're known for our flight program, but our faculty, you know, it's, there's, there's something to be said about bringing industry experience to the classroom. There's nothing wrong with somebody going out, 
getting their master's or PhD and going into the classroom and teaching. That's great. But at Ember Royal, we have uh, professors that bring industry experience to the classroom. So when you're sitting in there working on a project or professors sharing a story about a time they were working on a project somewhere in their previous uh, previous job, they can share, we, we use this, this formula, this, this is what we use to solve this problem. So they bring industry experience. And to tie that back into where our faculty, as Sarah said, with the co-ops and internships, that faculty also has ties to the industry that can help you with getting co-ops, internships, or jobs, your first job coming out of college. So again, that's one of those unique things that I think sets ember apart. Absolutely. And just to add on to what Ken said about the experience from the faculty members, our faculty are also readily accessible to our students. So in the next section, when we talk about campuses, you're going to see that we're a little bit on the smaller side um, in regards to colleges and universities, but we do that so that we can keep small uh, class sizes as well as a, a good student to faculty ratio. You're actually going to know your faculty members. Most importantly, they're going to know you um, and you're going to be able to build that relationship to kind of help supplement the education that you are getting. So all of that is going to lead us quickly into the outcome section. So where is an Embry-Riddle degree going to take you? Um, what does that kind of look like? And we're really excited um, to share this statistic with you. Over 97% of our graduates are employed um, in their career field or pursuing graduate education within one year of graduation. Um, if anybody happens to know the national average, it's about 38%. So this is super exciting for us at Embry-Riddle. And a lot of things that are contributing to this 97% are things that Ken and I also talked about, already talked about in our prior slides, but also the industry. So we work with a very niche industry and Ken's gonna tell us a little bit about that. Sure, so again, niche industry, we talk about we're known for the aviation, aerospace, um, Boeing, Lockheed Martin, but in the high demand jobs, you know, the pilots, we know there's a pilot shortage um, that's, that's, uh, that's projected out for the next 20 years. You also need the maintainers, the, the individuals that are working on the aircraft. So our aviation maintenance science program here at the Daytona Beach campus um, is leading students into jobs and earning salary. We have, again, Sarah talked about the business program at both campuses. And, the, and how well they do at the Arizona campus um, competing at other state universities. You know, engineering is one thing. We like to point out our human factors. Our human factor psychology program, you know, people don't just wake up one day and say, I think I'm gonna be a human factor psychologist. Um, you know, if you've been on an aircraft, the Dreamliner Boeing 777, um, when the engineers started building that aircraft, it's a state-of-the-art aircraft. And one of those things that the, that they did was when you when you sit down at a normal aircraft window and you turn the sun's blaring in you just turn and reach and, and pull down the shade well the engineers build it where you push a button underneath uh, a little sensor they wanted you to touch the window and it did, and, and make the window go opaque well nobody could figure that out so human factor psychologists came in and told the engineers if you put a sensor at the bottom of the window People are going to understand that that's what you touch because you don't go attentively go around your house at night touching the windows to close every night. So nobody understood that. So our human factor psychologist came in and told the engineers what to do with this. And sure enough, they made that change. So if you ever uh, fly on the Boeing Dreamliner, just look and see. And that's what human factor psychologists did. And Sarah, I know you'll touch about the safety and science that you're out at the Arizona campus. All right, so speaking of which, like, like Ken said, right now is such a great time to come into the industry. There's tons of needs for pilots right now, outside of everything COVID, of course. Um, tons of need for pilots, engineers, but also security and intelligence. You know, as our society changes, um, maybe so especially now, we're all on Zoom um, more often than we used to be. So as we become a society that um, is more reliant on technology, um, it seems that everybody has, you know, an, an iPhone or or, um, an Apple Watch that you can pay by just touching something. You know, as we become just more reliant on those technology 
a variety of technology means uh, the security measures are going to need to be in place to protect us, not just in aviation and aerospace, but also in any industry. Any industry right now has a security and intelligence element. Um, and we've got the degree programs to kind of fill the need uh, for those high demand career fields, which all goes back to that 97% placement rate that Ken and I talked about. So. Great opportunities at Embry-Riddle. And we've got the last two sections that we're gonna head into. So we're gonna talk about our campuses. Um, so we'll go in alphabetical order and I'll, be, I'll go first with Arizona. So um, our Arizona campus is located in Prescott, Arizona. If you aren't aware, Prescott is about an hour and a half north of Phoenix. And that means a couple of things. One, it means that it's much cooler up here. Um, summertime right now, I think Phoenix just broke the record of having over um, the longest length of having over 110 degree days. Uh, we've only been about 90, 95 ish up here in Prescott. So we typically run about 20 degrees cooler because we're in an upper elevation and we are so high in elevation that we can actually get snow. So a great, really pretty place. Um, but campus wise, our average class size is about 25 students per class. And I mentioned earlier our smaller total student body sizes. So at Embry-Riddle Prescott, we have about 3,000 students, which is on the smaller size of colleges and universities, particularly for those in our state. Even though we've got a small student body size, our students are really active because they're all kind of interested in aviation and aerospace. We find that it's really easy for our students to make friends because there's so many commonalities in what they like to do. So clubs and organizations, things to do outside of the classroom, things to do just to have fun. Uh, we've got fraternities and sororities as well as intercollegiate sports. We participate in the NAIA Division of Intercollegiate Athletics. And then we also host Air Force and Army ROTC detachments on our campus. So fun fact about Embry-Riddle is outside of any of the military academies, we do place the most pilots into the military. Now a little bit more about Prescott, Arizona. I kind of jumped ahead of myself a little bit, but uh, we picked these two locations of Arizona and Florida for a reason. And one of those reasons is excellent weather. So sunny locations, which makes for great flying weather, especially for our flight students. Um, Prescott, Arizona has actually been ranked as having the cleanest air in the nation by the American Lung Association. If you happen to literally need a fresh breath of fresh air, come see us out here in the mountains. Um, and then what I was going to talk about earlier happens to be with our, our kind of climate out here in Prescott. Uh, lots of people think of Arizona as just being cactus and dirt um, and being really hot. But as I mentioned, we are in northern Arizona and upper elevation, so it is cooler. We've got a variety of um, lakes for outdoor recreational activities such as kayaking and canoeing, good outdoor hiking trails, and Prescott's actually home to the largest population of ponderosa pine trees in the country. So a uh, little bit of information about our Arizona campus, and now Ken will tell us all about our campus in Florida. So our Florida campus, again, Daytona Beach, um, we are a little bit larger than the Arizona campus. Uh, you know, about 7,000 students is where we are right now. But the average class size, again, at both campuses um, is 25 to 1. We understand um, the, uh, the student-teacher interaction that we have. So we, we take that into account, and we try to manage our class sizes at 25 to 1, not like a big university where you're going to sit in a lecture hall with 500 kids doing an English 101 class. Just like at the Arizona campus, there's 200 clubs and organizations. And I would tell you that at both places, uh, if you show up on campus and there is not a club or organization, something that you're interested in, if you can get three or four of your friends um, that want to do the same thing, you can go to the Student Government Association and they will give you seed money to actually start, um, start that club or that organization that you want to do. I know uh, Sarah likes to talk about the, uh, her one of the favorite ones out the Arizona campus was the sweater club, uh, sweater vest club, where they would uh, wear a sweater vest one day for that. Same with the Arizona campus, uh, we have uh, sororities and fraternities, and I will tell you, yes, uh, we have those there, Greek life, but they do a lot of different things um, with, uh, with raising money for St. Jude's Children's Hospital, along with other uh, organizations like that. Um, at the, at the uh, Daytona Beach campus, we have uh, intercollegiate sports. We are, if you go to the next slide, Sarah, I think it's NCAA, we are NCAA Division II. 
here, here at the at the the Arizona uh, Daytona Beach campus, we have actually 20 NCAA Division II sports. Um, we are five miles from the beach, the world's most famous beaches, they would say. And as, Aaron, as Sarah had talked about earlier, number of days of sunshine, there's a reason why um, our campuses are in Daytona Beach and Prescott, Arizona uh, for the flying weather. One of the ties to our university, again, we're about an hour north of Kennedy Space Center and an hour east of Orlando and Disney World. So again, that ties industry, um, different things like that, whether it be recreational fun at Disney World or jobs, internships, believe it or not, we have a lot of students that go there. And then the ties to uh, Kennedy Space Center and NASA. And then at the Daytona Beach campus, we have the largest uni university-based telescope in the state of Florida. We believe it's in the Southeast. And, you know, I'll plug the Arizona campus they have a great planetarium out there. Um, if you ever visit the campuses, it, it, it's state of the art. You know, so that's a little bit about the campuses. I believe we're going into what we have now is um, our worldwide campus. Uh, I'm going to let Sarah talk about this, but I will plug that for, for the areas, the worldwide campus, um, if you are a high school sophomore, junior, and you think Ember Riddle is for you, you know, this is a way for you to say, hey, I want to come to Embry-Riddle and I want to get ahead so I can, we can work with you to take actual classes, get college credit, so you're actually ahead when you step on campus as an incoming freshman. So Sarah, you can go ahead and talk about this slide real quick. All right, so um, two residential campuses that Ken and I already talked about are campus in Arizona and Florida, and then we mentioned Embry-Riddle Worldwide. So this is where we have our online programs, and Embry-Riddle Worldwide has actually been ranked by U.S. News and World Report as having the number one online bachelor's program in the nation. So we're very proud of that. Um, and Worldwide provides our students with a lot of flexibility, um, especially especially now when things are um, just changing a little bit with COVID-19, um, but it's giving our students to still get an Embry-Riddle education, but in an online type of modality. Or perhaps maybe you're not ready to move all the way across the country or move to Florida or Arizona to be with one of us. Um, so maybe Embry-Riddle Worldwide is a good option for you. You may have seen Embry-Riddle Worldwide campuses are all over the nation as well as all over the world, um, oftentimes located around airports or military bases. So if you've been driving by an airport and you've seen an Embry-Riddle sign, now you know that is one of our Embry-Riddle worldwide locations. And that will wrap up our campus information. So we have talked about our facts, our academics, the outcomes that an Embry-Riddle education can take you and our two campuses. So now let's talk about how to get there. What do you need to do in order to be an Embry-Riddle student? And we will start with the admissions process. So um, we have rolling admissions, first of all, which means that there's no application deadline. You can always um, submit your application. So we, over the summer, just within the last month or so, we opened up the application for next fall, fall 2021, though we haven't started admitting students yet, the application is now open. So the best time to apply, um, if you're still a high school student, would be the fall semester of your senior year. And this is what we're going to need to review your application for admission. So the application itself is available on our website. So either prescott.eru.edu or daytonabeach.eru.edu. You can find our application for admission. We're not on the Common App. We're not on a special application system. We do have our own application. There is normally a $50 application fee when you apply. However, for coming to our presentation today, we've given you all this four letter fee waiver code. So write this down if you're looking to apply. DBPC, Delta Bravo, Papa Charlie, that will waive that $50 application fee. Just kind of a thank you for listening to Ken and I talk for 45 minutes this afternoon. In addition, we will need your transcript. So if you're a high school student, we will need a copy of your high school transcripts. Or if you're a transfer student, then all your college transcripts is what we'll need to review you for admission. Besides that, we want to see, um, we want to get to know you a little bit. So we want to require or request letters of recommendation and then some optional items. So Embry-Riddle is a test optional school. We've actually been test optional for the past couple of years. If you've taken ACT or SAT and you feel that they are, your scores are an accurate representation of your educational background, go ahead and send us those scores. 
If you're not really feeling that great about your scores, don't worry, you don't have to send them to us. They're completely optional. Another optional item would be an essay or a resume. So once we have all of these items, this is what we're gonna be making our decision on. So we wanna, as I mentioned, we want to get to know you. Yes, we wanna see good grades and we wanna see good test scores if you submitted them, but we also wanna see what those letters of recommendation have to say about you. We want to um, make sure that you took the appropriate math and science classes, especially if you're looking into an engineering degree, we wanna make sure that you're prepared to come into calculus. Um, or maybe you are the captain of the basketball team or you're in marching band or you're a Girl Scout or an Eagle Scout. Anything that's gonna help us get to know you in the process makes our job a little bit easier. Um, anything that kind of shows us, yes, you are academically prepared, you're driven, um, you're ready to come to Embry-Riddle and be successful because that's the most important thing. We want you to come here um, to be successful and to help you achieve your dreams. Um, a couple of frequent questions that we get is Ken and I have been talking to you. We're from two different campuses. So people ask us all the time, do I submit a, an application to each campus. You actually can't, you can't. So we have the same application, as I mentioned. At the point of application, you do want to select a campus that you are kind of most interested in, or at least leaning to a little bit. But do know that at any time during the application process, or even after you've been admitted, um, you can switch your application to the other campus for the most part. As long as there's space in the degree programs, um, then you will be able to move your application from one campus to the other. Okay. So now Ken will tell us a little bit about financial aid. So what happens after you've been admitted to Embry-Riddle? So again, as Sarah said, um, we have not started admitting students. We're gonna do that probably sometime starting in the middle of September. And then we're gonna go through and uh, once you're admitted, every student is automatically reviewed for merit-based scholarships. And that'll probably start sometime um, the middle of October. That way we see what our freshman class is this year, go through that, we'll start reviewing merit-based middle of October. And then again, for scholarships, grants, and then we also uh, do merit aid, external scholarships, involvement on campus. We have uh, the donor-based scholarships that you're eligible to apply for. And then the FAFSA, the free application for federal student aid, becomes available October 1st of your senior year. We ask that you file that because not only does the federal government look at you for any need-based aid, you may qualify for them, but our uh, campuses also take a second look at you for any need-based aid, you may qualify from us as a university. So again, we look at all that whole person concept, merit-based aid, we give a lot of scholarships. We have a lot of students who bring external scholarships um, to, to both campuses, and then a lot of national merit scholars come to our campus. So again, we have a lot of things going on, but over 90% of our students receive some type of financial aid through scholarships, grants, or loans. So one thing that we would like to encourage you um, to do, and this is kind of my number one piece of advice that I give to prospective college students, is visit campus, um, whether it be, you know, Prescott or Daytona or both or any other campus or any other college that you're looking at. Yeah. So many students tell us that once they actually got stepped foot on campus, they saw the labs that we talked about, they ran into a current student or a faculty member, they saw it and it felt right. They just knew. Um, so we encourage you to visit our campus. Both of our campuses are currently open right now and we are conducting tours. Um, a little bit in a modified sense at the moment, um, but still you can come to our campus you can see the facilities, you can talk to a faculty member, um, talk to a current student, kind of see what it would be like to be an Embry-Riddle student. We also have um, on our website virtual tours that you can take of our campuses. Um, so if you're not able to travel out to Florida or Arizona, uh, you can take one of the virtual tours and it'll kind of lead you into the buildings so that you can see some of our great lab facilities that we do have to offer. All right, so that really wraps up our presentation that we have today. I know that Krista and Megan have been busily answering the q and I've been peeking in whenever I haven't been speaking. Um, so we do have about five more minutes. Ken, I think maybe we'll, we'll read some of the Q&A and see if we can answer them verbally. Sure thing. Um, if that makes sense, just for a couple minutes. And then if we don't get to anything, just know that we will um, get back to you um, as best as we can. So 
Um, let's see here. First question, um, if I'm interested in cybersecurity, would I be able to take classes related to that at the Daytona Beach campus? Ken? I'm sorry, I was reading, I'm sorry, <laughs> sir. I was reading, I was reading one. Go ahead, say, I'm sorry. I apologize. Okay. What was it? Um, what so was cyber the security, the cybersecurity, um, do you guys have that at Daytona Beach or is it just at Arizona? So the cybersecurity, uh, the major itself is at the Arizona campus, at the Daytona Beach campus is a minor here at the Daytona Beach campus. So um, if you want to major in cybersecurity at the Prescott, Arizona campus, minor is at the Daytona Beach campus. Okay. Um, some questions about the application here. So um, can you start your application and come back to it another day? You absolutely can. So once you kind of create an account to start your application, you can save it and come back to it another time. Another frequent question that we get is in regards to how to get application documents to us. So um, I mentioned that we need high school transcripts, we need um, letters of recommendation, SAT or ACT test scores. Um, you can email those directly to us. You can mail them directly to us. Or if you go to our website, you'll find an upload link where you can electronically upload your documents for your application. Um, and we'll make sure it gets put into your file. Um, let's see, some other application questions here. Would you recommend your ACT score? Oh, what would you recommend your ACT score being um, for it being useful to your application? Ken, you wanna take that question? Sure. So, you know, uh, we get asked this all the time, you know, what's your average SAT score, you know, um, again, we'll take a student that GPA test scores aren't so well, but there's a story behind it, but our average SAT is probably around 1180 to 1200. Um, if you, if you really come push the shove, but like Sarah says, when we start reviewing the application, um, we will take that and look at it, but if there's a story behind, you may not be a good test taker, and so you scored a little bit lower, but that's okay. We will work with you, our counselors are trained to be able to guide you and work with you to get you admitted to the university. Okay, um, let's see here. I'm just kind of finding some quick questions. So questions about um, ROTC. So. Air Force, so let's talk about this really quick. So I mentioned that at Arizona, we've got Air Force and Army ROTC detachments. Our Daytona Beach campus has Air Force, Army, and Navy ROTC. We just don't have any water in Arizona to have a Navy ROTC program. So um, both campuses have them. Really great opportunities. And remember that if you do participate in an ROTC program during your time at college, um, upon graduation, you commission as a second lieutenant into the military. And then you get your, um, you'll have your assignment. So your role that you're gonna pursue uh, when you are in the military there. And, and I wanna point out too, if you were interested in ROTC scholarships, the scholarship application opens up February of your junior year in high school and closes around November, December of your senior year in high school. And you need to go out to each one, airforcerotc.com, armyrotc.com, navyrotc, to actually apply for that scholarship. That is a separate scholarship. Army and Navy pay full tuition and fees. And then the Air Force, depending on what type of scholarship, mm -hmm. they pay full tuition and fees or $18,000 toward your tuition and fees. Okay, so some additional, lots of questions about application and scholarship. So just a reminder, uh, we do have a rolling admissions process, which means we do not have an application deadline. Um, the earlier, the better, though, to optimize your scholarship potential, because as Ken mentioned, we do provide those merit scholarships from Embry-Riddle, um, and we award those on a first-come, first-served basis. So once a student applies and once we start reviewing for merit scholarships, um, we'll just continuously do that to review students for scholarships. And those are the ones from Embry-Riddle um, to apply to your accounts. The fee waiver code, somebody's asking, is Delta DB, Delta Bravo, Papa Charlie, DBPC. And then how rigorous um, the course load. Again, if you're looking for as an engineer, you need to have at least pre-calculus for our technical degree program, algebra two for our non-tech. Um, physics, chemistry. Yes, we would like to see that in high school, some type of biology labs um, with that. Again, the course rigor, uh, us, the counselors will work with you, but yes, you need to have at least pre-calc. 
Um, questions about athletic scholarships. So yes, you could potentially get an athletic scholarship if you do play one of our intercollegiate sports. Um, as Ken mentioned, they, Daytona Beach is a part of the NCAA. And here at Arizona, we're a part of the NAIA. So both have scholarship opportunities um, available depending on what the coach has to offer that particular season that you are looking to attend. Someone said, can I say thank you? You absolutely can. Thank you all for joining us here today. Let's see if we have, I think we've got just a couple more minutes, one more minute or so. Feel I free to just that's... take one more minute, Sarah, if you'd like. Okay, all right. So I think I will just kind of close it there, Ken, if that sounds good to you. Um, on good. behalf of Ken and myself and Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, thank you all so much for taking the time to spend with us and listen to us, tell you about our institution. Um, we'd love to see you at a campus visit, um, or if we're able to travel later in the fall, we hope to come see you um, a little later somewhere in your neck of the woods. So thanks, everybody. Yep. Thank you guys for attending our uh, virtual presentation. Mm -hmm. survey will appear we do ask for your feedback and we encourage you to check out the additional sessions that are running through thursday and sign up for the recordings as well thanks so much everyone have a good day are we allowed to oh it still says recording bye guys <laughs>